Hello. Hello. I'm now officially live everywhere. So hello and welcome. <laughs> um, so do you have a hopeless horse? I know that I had a lot growing up. Um, a lot of them. <laughs> uh, not, I don't think really too many at the same time, but definitely had my fair share. <laughs> um, so growing up, I had, first of all, I was blessed to be able to learn to ride on a horse that, um, that my mother had actually foaled. And mom, if you're watching, correct me if that's incorrect. But that is my understanding was that my mom bred a her mare and produced Baby, which was literally her name, Baby. And Baby went on to be a champion barrel racer and a trail horse, but not just like go down the trails trail horse. Like she did cool tricks. <laughs> like she would walk up on uh, a bridge that was placed on a barrel and teeter totter is pretty awesome. Anyway, um, so I learned a lot from baby. Uh, but a lot of my horses were relatively cheap, sometimes free. We got a lot of off the track standard breads and they were actually really awesome. Um, they're super versatile breed. So if you're looking for a horse, get yourself a standard bread from, um, if you need a rescue, get in touch with me because there are uh, particular places that you can get standard bred racehorses from. And they actually go ahead and put the time in to make them ready for riding, which in my experience has been rel relatively easy anyways, but hey, it's already done for you. So why not? Um, so I have some suggestions if you are looking for that. But uh it wasn't always easy. And there were a lot of horses that I thought were going to be good enough to do everything that I wanted to do and more. And it was extremely disappointing to find out that they just weren't going to make it. They just didn't have it. Um, there were horses. I had one. <laughs> Her name was Zoe. And honestly, I don't remember Zoe's backstory, which would probably impact um, what I have to say about her now. Um, but she, like, we straight up called her suicidal. <laughs> she was crazy. Um, she would do some things for me, but not everything. I had a couple different trainers ride her um, and more skilled riders than me also just try and get on and see if they could. I had a trainer tell someone, like, ask, uh, ask one of my friends who was more further along than I was at the time if she would rider because it was like, is this a rider error or a horse error? Yeah. When uh, my friend got on her, she actually like we, the arena that we were riding in, they to store like their wheelbarrows and stuff. They'd hang them on the wall, which was like super handy. However, it was hanging on the wall with the wheels and the little supports sticking out. Yeah. This crazy horse seriously ran up to it and tried like reared and tried to like spear herself onto that wheelbarrow. Ah, <laughs> uh, I feel like that was, that was like the end of that horse experience, right? Like you are hopeless. <laughs> there is nothing I can do for you to get past this. And you're certainly not going to help me, um, Gosh, I don't know. At the time, I was probably getting to the point of jumping about two foot six, maybe, maybe a little bit before that. It's hard to remember. You know, they all kind of blur together. Uh, but about two foot, say two foot, two foot six, psh, big deal. And uh, doing intro level dressage and it wasn't a big deal, but she couldn't do what I needed her to do. Right. So what do we all do when we get to that point? We buy another horse. We get rid of that one. Zoe, from my understanding, did go on to semi-enjoy trail riding. It wasn't too demanding of her. The people that got her um, literally just went on casual road rides and trail rides around their house. So there was no trailering involved for her. It was just much less stress. And she was fairly happy with it. However, this is kind of the thing that, that I, I <coughs> when I look back now, I can see well, first of all, 
<laughs> she wasn't hopeless, but she wasn't going to meet my needs. And I wasn't willing to do the, the big thing here is the big thing here is that I wasn't willing to do what it was going to take to make it so that she could meet my needs. Okay. So first and foremost, if you have a hopeless horse, first question to ask yourself, am I willing to do whatever it takes to get this horse from where they are now to where I need them to be? This isn't about them being hopeless. This is about what are you willing to do? Um, and then obviously there are going to be times when you have to just say, I can't, this, I don't have what it takes to help this horse. Horse is not hopeless. There's hope for that horse. Guarantee it. And I look back at Zoe, who, who everybody that knew her, everybody that saw her, she was hopeless, crazy, suicidal. Hmm. Okay. So if, if you're not willing to do what it takes, then that's fine. Don't put it on the horse, put it on yourself, move to the next one. Okay. Cause we've all got goals and I know that better than anybody. Next thing we need to talk about though, is I just told you, I have no idea what her background was when we got her red flag. I mean, we're not always going to know, but here's the thing. If you don't know where your horse has been and you just are like, they check my boxes. I can make them into what I want. Blah, blah, blah. And you, then you you better be committed to making them into what you want, one. And two, you got to know where they came from to help them get to where they're going. Because if you don't know where they came from, you don't know what kind of trauma they're carrying around. And if you haven't considered trauma in your horse's life, you're missing a huge part. If you've got goals you want to meet and your horse isn't steadily improving towards those goals all the time, you get a roadblock that pops up in front of you. This could be trauma. I'm not like, let's really evaluate this because trauma comes up all the time in life. It doesn't have to be, my horse was attacked by a mountain lion. Yep, that's trauma, sure. But it could also be, my horse had a really sh experience with their last trainer. Or, Maybe your horse has been in a trailer accident and you're not always going to know these answers. If you're not able to know what their past was like and the things that they may have encountered. And that's the thing too, is, you know, the, the previous owner could say to you, like, this is what they've been through and blah, blah, blah. And it doesn't look like it's been that bad of an experience or they didn't mention anything that sent up red flags um, or that correlates to the behavior that you're seeing or not seeing, then you, you might not be able to miss it. You might not, you know, like you might not be able to identify what it was. You might have missed it, I guess is what I'm saying. You might have missed it. Um, or everybody might have missed it. You might not know what that trauma is. And that's okay. But you have to be willing. If you're not going to be able to fill in all of the gaps, you've got to be willing to take it slow enough to find the gaps. And this is why. This is why this is huge trust, okay? <laughs> all right. You get a new job. You show up, they expect you to do your job, right? They don't ask you about your past life. They don't ask you about your traumas, but your traumas will be triggered in that situation, potentially, right? Anger trauma or anger triggers, uh, anxiety triggers, all that can happen to you at a new job. And if people don't care to take the time, because you're not going to unload your life story to them first, right? But if people don't care to take the time, to figure out why you're freaking the frick out right now on a regular Monday and nobody can understand where you're coming from. If nobody's willing to take the time to say, Hey, are you okay? What's going on? You're probably going to quit your job. Oh, either that, or you're going to be useless productive wise. Like you're not going to produce anything for that company. Your horses are no different. <laughs> They're no different. It's trust that you're building when you take the time and hold the space that they need. Love them enough. Want more results from them enough to take a step back, look at the whole situation, and see what you can do to potentially change that situation. If you notice a trigger that's consistently happening, what can you do to, to avoid that trigger for now or desensitize that trigger, make that trigger a positive thing. It's going to take time, but this is where it comes down to. It's not the horse that's hopeless. It's how much time are you willing to commit? 
What are you willing to put into it? Okay, this is my topic, y'all. This is my lane. This is what I've been through this so many times. And there's so many horses that I look back on that I could have done better for. You can't know where they go when you get rid of all of them, right? There's not always a happy, oh, Zoe just went off to be a trail horse and she was much happier. It doesn't always work that way. It doesn't always work that way. I've heard some really nasty stories that nobody wants to hear about the way horses were treated when they have been parted with. When you send them on down the road because that's what you need to do because that's how this game works. Bad things happen sometimes. And the best way we can protect our horses is to take time for them. And to see them as not hopeless, but something that requires time and love just as much as training and nutrition. So that's, that's, that's kind of, <laughs> that's my thing. That's what I'm passionate about. That's what I'm here for. And that's why I'm writing the book. I am totally writing the book, Hope for the Hopeless Horse. Solutions you didn't know existed because there's stuff out there. There's stuff that I know now that I could have used for Zoe and many of the others. I have many others. Some of them that when I realized how simple of a fix it would have been, how fast it would have been for me to fix the problem, the root cause of the problem, not just, you know, well, the symptom is they blow up every time they get out of the barn. Okay. Nope. That's not the root cause. It's not the root cause of this problem is not leaving the barn. The root cause of this problem is something else and we need to find it. That's our job as horse owners is to find the root cause. And if you're going to mess around trying to treat the symptom, you're not going to either it's going to take you a hell of a lot longer and you're going to stumble upon the root cause or you're not going to make any progress and your horse isn't going to trust you because you're not taking the time to listen to what they're saying. So be on the lookout. For my book because i promise you if you are a horse owner if you're a horse lover if you're a caregiver there will be hope for you there will be hope for your horse and it will be easier than you think it is i promise it's a lot simpler than you think but be watching out for that hopefully mid to end of march that will be available so that's all that is my spiel for the evening Thank you guys so much for being here. I actually really enjoy talking with y'all. So that is it for tonight and I will catch you next time.